I'm Russell Shu, and I'm a professor of linguistics in the Department of Linguistics at UCLA. My dad had this globe, world globe, and I used to look on there and, and I'd look at places like Africa and i think, I wonder what those people out in those jungles sound like when they talk. You know? So uh, I was just sort of fascinated by the idea that people talked in different ways that you, other people couldn't understand and they communicated with each other. But I had a teacher um, in, when I did my year of graduate study in French who specialized in the history of the French language and Old French and things like that, French linguistics basically. And I really liked that. And he's the guy that told me there was a field of linguistics. And so I kind of figured that's for me. And so I applied to the linguistics program at UC Berkeley and I did a year of graduate work there. Well, language teaching methods since I first started learning languages have vastly changed. Through the late 70s, 80s, and into the, well, up till now, that there's been a much more emphasis on communication, commun using language for communicati communicative purposes. So uh, language class activities, for example, instead of uh, repeating after a teacher, or memorizing dialogues and repeating them, or, or doing grammatical exercises where you do substitutions of a verb in some kind of a sentence frame or something like that. Uh, the class activities and cl language classes now involve things more like games where you, uh, well, doing the things like we did in the House of Videos, for example. The House of Baca video series that I've been using for teaching came way later in my <laughs> career with Africa. I'd been, you know, there for under various guises a lot of times. But together we had a crew of about 20 Nigerians, about half women and half men. And uh, so we put together sets of scenes, so like uh, little vignettes of say two to four minutes each of people engaged in natural conversation. So you, you asked me how we set up natural scenes. So just to give you an example or two, we had one where uh, we wanted to in, have a lesson that incorporated the notion of have. House has a special way to construct have sentences that mean I have this or I don't have that. And also sentences that have to do with existence, like is there something, there is, there isn't something. So uh, we, what we did for w this particular one was um, many of the people in our videos were sort of real people, so that we, somebody in our crew knew this woman that sold jewelry from door to, she went door to door selling jewelry. So we got her to come into a house with two of our actors, two women, and so she brought her jewelry in there. And so we, we set it up. We said, here's what's going to happen. She's going to come display her jewelry. You ask her if she has this and that and the other thing. And, and then she, you know, she was just going to respond to what they said. So their questions would sort of drive what she said because she wasn't one of her actors. <laughs> Uh, and so we managed to constrict the vocabulary to just the sort of things that a jewelry salesman would peddle and the gra grammatical constructions and so forth to having and not having and existing and not existing and that sort of, that sort of thing. The students were assigned to watch a particular video and each one has a, the, a transcript and a translation with it. So we just when they presumably watched it and then come to class, then we discuss we discuss the video. We'd a, we'd actually go through it in class, you know, talk about some of the complex constructions or things they couldn't understand because these people were talking to normal houses. So a lot of times they'd say things kind of fast or use a, a construction that we hadn't really planned on. So we'd go through the, those, and then I have a set of lessons that go with each video. So they uh, there I clip pictures out of the videos, and so I'd have exercises where they'd have to do question and answer activities with the pictures from the video uh, and that kind of thing, translation exercises related to it, cultural, little cultural lessons about things that came up in the videos and so forth and stuff. So, the, but the reason I like the videos is because language is about people talking and to me it's so much more interesting. I, I don't know that it really adds anything to your knowledge, but it grabs your attention so much more to see somebody actually saying things than to see it written down on a piece of paper in, in black and white. Uh, so you, I usually, in the videos that I make, I usually have like subtitles or something like that that's so you can see what they're actually saying, but it's just much more appealing to see somebody actually doing the talking.